Now we come to the gospel. And again, our theme is humility. And in this text, our Lord is very bold, very, very helpful too. Um, he's at a banquet. Uh, where's the English? Oh, here it is. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, now the text says, and they were watching him closely. Okay? Okay. But he was watching them. <laughs> See? Uh, whoops, look where I'm looking at this Greek text, and it's all, you know, it's right here, isn't it? Yes. Um, See, they were watching him. And uh, he was watching them and observing how they all took the first places, you see. And so he said to them, you see. So they're watching him, but he's watching them. See, and this is Luke 14, right in the middle of Luke. And we, we got that first line. And then there's a big skip. We go down to verse 7. Uh, but that's okay, because uh, there's plenty of matter in what the, the church has given us for this Sunday. Um, I'm going to look, though. I don't think that I I didn't. So just give me a moment so that I have it if I need it. Uh, Luke 7, starting with verse 14. Uh I'm sorry, starting at Luke 14, starting with verse 1. Um, sorry about that. Okay. And it happened that he went into the house of one of the leaders of the Pharisees on a Sabbath to eat a meal. Ke'aufti isan. And they were pariti rumini afton. They were watching him closely. They didn't notice was that he was watching them. And so, you see, uh, he observed the fact that the guests chose place, the places of honor, and so he told them a parable. Everybody comes in, they want to be a big shot. They want to be up at the front table. They want to be, oh, for heaven's sakes. But anyway, we wouldn't be that bold, you know, to do something like that. But we were, we're just as nutty and just as arrogant and prideful, we just do it in a slicker way sometimes. So, um, he watches that, you see. Now, the text skips a whole bunch of stuff that we're not going to uh, go into now. It's about the healing of somebody. And then, uh, starting with verse 7, he says now, uh, he told them this parable, this illustration. The guest chose us this, he told him this parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor. This is humorous. In case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, he would start to take the lowest place. Now there's humor there. <laughs> I mean, he's watching this go on. And he's a guest, guest. And remember, as far as they're concerned, he's still a hick from Nazareth. And these are well-educated leaders of the people. So, But he doesn't he say, I, I'd like to make a suggestion, does he? He knows who he is. And so he says, when you were invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor. <laughs> Why? Because you're humble? No. In case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And then the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. Do you feel the humor? You know, don't try to be big shot all the time because you're going to get tripped up and then you're going to look like a jerk and you're going to be at the bottom of the line. Uh, that's so humorous, I think. When you're invited, go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. That's his little uh, piece of advice. Remember, he's not 
among his friends or his disciples. He's at this upper class group of scholars and, and he's there. And he's lecturing them. Why? Because he's the son of God and he's trying to help them. So when you're invited, go sit at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. And then he goes on to describe what he's talking about. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And that's the first. There's two lessons we're going to get from this text. The first one is that one. Now, that is the same. Well, look, I think I'll go down low, and then they'll invite me up, and then I'll look like a big shot. No, it's just, I'm happy here. I want the man to have a nice party, and it's a wedding banquet. Everybody be, you know, uh, greeting and, and caring about the bride and the groom, and I'll just sit here and enjoy myself. That'll be great. Because I don't need a whole lot of affirmation. Why not? Because I'm affirmed by Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Every day he talks to me. Every day he forgives my sins. Every day he feeds me on his body and blood. I don't need that. And I'm all upset if it doesn't happen. Well, we're all upset because we're so stupid. But he says, like, if you want to look good, take the lowest place. <laughs> so humorous. And then they'll make you up, you know, they'll bring you up and you'll, everybody will think you're some kind of big shot. Then you'll be happy. Now, what's behind all that? If that's what makes you happy, fella, you've got a long way to go. What ought to make you happy is that my Father loves you, that He's given you life, that He's given you honor, that He's made you a Jew so that you know the dealings of my Father with your people. That's your honor. Not that you're over the top table or something, you see? So that's the first lesson you can get from the meal. But now there's another one. Uh, he said to the one who invited him, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. What a tragedy, you're repaid. When you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Every time I read this text, I think of a time I was in Rome. I was with a group of uh, American street preachers. I was preaching on the street with them. Mother, uh, oh, the foundress of the little sisters. Uh, Mother, uh, it'll come and I don't need it. Anyway, she asked me to do that, so I was doing it. Well, we had a wedding. One of those young men married somebody no, the other way around. Yeah, one, one of the young men from the upper class in Rome married one of the girls who had come over on this preaching team from the States. And so uh, they had the wedding out at St. Paul's outside the walls, and the abbot there did the wedding. Then they had the reception at the top of the Spanish steps at the Trinita dei Monti in a great big hall. And there they had these sawhorses and planks and and it was covered nicely and some food. And just as we were getting ready to start, one of the young men jumped up on the table and said, listen to this. And he read this text. When you give a banquet, invite the, the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Not just your friends will pay you back. And you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. Then you'll be blessed. Nobody appreciated me. Ha! Ah, my father sees that. And you're going to hear about it and be, be hugged and honored when you see him. Don't worry about it. And you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Good enough. I'd rather get repaid there because you can never lose that. So, what happened? They picked up all those tables and sawhorses and all the food and if you've ever been to Rome, you know that at the top of the Spanish Steps there's a little piazza right in front of the church of the Trinita dei Monti. They set that table up there and they invited, this is Easter Day, remember, if you don't know, Easter Day, the Spanish steps are so crowded you can't even walk on them. Between tourists and people, guys selling their trinkets. Well, they set up that table and invited everybody to, to the party, which was wonderful. Everybody came 
And so they climbed up on top of the van and started to preach the gospel. Well, they don't know Italian very well, so I'm doing a lot of the translating for them. Well, if you could have looked at the faces of the guys selling these trinkets, literally, if looks could kill, in fact, if kill could kill, but they couldn't dare do it at the top of the steps, uh, we would all have been dead. And especially me, because I'm the priest, and I'm there, you know, speaking in Italian, so they know what is being said, and preaching Jesus. And the hatred. All I could think of was Paul at Ephesus. Remember? Started the riot. And they were trying to get Paul at least thrown into jail and maybe killed. Now, I'm not saying Paul. But I understood the dynamics. La musica. Tutti ballano alla musica, the Italians say. Everybody dances to the music. The money is more important than anything else. This is Easter Day. Everybody's there. Everybody's in a festive mood. We can clean up on these trinkets and souvenirs and things we sell. And now these jerks come along and they're talking on top of that van and everybody's paying attention to them. You know, and it's all that guy's fault there, that priest. We, we got to get rid of him. Well, they can't. I'm standing there in front of everybody else and I'm not going off to the side where they can get at me. And so... But the point is, you see, that text had great influence that day. And many people, many Italians, you know, who never hear the gospel because they never go to church, heard the gospel. And some, I know, were touched. Now, how much did they follow up? I don't know. I never saw them again. But they had a chance to hear the word of God because somebody took this text seriously. And right out there on the top of the Spanish steps, set up the tables and the food and the wine and invited everybody to come to the party. Now, there weren't a lot of poor and crippled there. I imagine there were some. They were mostly tourists, but nevertheless, they're poor spiritually. And uh, it was just a beautiful experience with all the hatred going on. And it was going on. Woo. And that's why I thought of Paul at Ephesus. Great as Diana of Ephesus. Because they were silversmiths were losing money. Nobody was buying the little trinket, you know, uh, image of the temple to take home, uh, you know, for 20 bucks or whatever it was. They were listening to Paul. And that made a riot. Money, money, money. And don't think it's just all the non-Christians. We can do it too, you know. We put money ahead of everything, unless we watch it. So anyhow, uh, our Lord's advice, first part, if you go to the party... Don't try to be important. Just sit still. You know, there are people with such an art for attracting attention to themselves. They have a nice booming voice and they tell jokes and everybody's looking at them and laughing. But it means zip. It doesn't mean anything. You see? And so don't do that, even interiorly. And if you do have a banquet, if you don't want to invite the poor right into your house, find a way to have some of that, or say you're going to spend 80 bucks on this proper, on this meal. Okay, take 20 of the 80 and give it to the poor. Do something. And the Lord, you see, uh, promises you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. You will be repaid. I never forget those kind of things. If you take care of the poor, I will take care of you. And that's why our present Pope is so insistent yeah, yeah, we got great ceremonies and we're real smart and got great theology, but what about the poor? Amen.